Today, I will be assembling this Bobolon five shelf bookshelf. And I'm going to be doing this live from scratch. So I have not read the instructions. I have not looked into any part of this online. So I am doing and seeing all of this for the first time. So it's sure to be exciting. Now, my goal here is to actually construct this during the live stream uh, without interruption. Now, remember, I have children downstairs. So it's possible that all falls apart and uh, I will not be able to finish it on live stream, but the intent is to start and to finish this on live stream. So probably wondering where I've been. Maybe you're not wondering that. Uh, I just have not prioritized doing this uh, and adding content to the YouTube channel. I always make intentions or have intentions to do that and then it never manifests. So I want to try doing some live streams uh, because it removes the editing aspect, right? So if I can remove the editing aspect, I'm hopeful that that will uh, give me more initiative and more drive to actually create content. We'll see. And then we'll see how the YouTube nation likes that. So let's see what we've got here. So I guess to begin, you can see here that this is the bookshelf that I'm trying to build. It is a five tier bookshelf, full five tiers. We need all five tiers for storing random things like Funko Pops and Pokemon cards and you know, the works. So you can see here that uh, these are the directions and this is the first time that I'm seeing these directions. So this could be a very easy uh, item to assemble or this could be very difficult, but we're gonna find out together, right? So yes, I'm one of those guys that tries to look over the instructions before I start. I find that it helps save me rework time later. So let's see what we have here. Let's make sure we've got all the parts. So I already see all this hardware here. Look at all these beautiful different components here that they have for us. Wonderful. Probably we'll need that later. We have some bracing. Here, this will be one of the sides for this bookcase or bookshelf. It's not technically a bookcase. So there's a lot of firsts uh, going on right now. First, I've never live streamed myself building something. Secondly, I've not used the microphone that I'm currently using. I've also not used the app before to stream. So once again, a lot of firsts going on. We'll see how this, how this all works out. So I see that we have some shelves now. There are numbers on the shelves. It's got some bracing parts as well. It's gonna be really interesting here is to see if I just give up and disgust and just show maybe the finished product, but who knows. So we've got some shelves. Looks like they have some already installed brackets here that we can put screws through potentially. I'm not sure, figure it out. Also, this is not a sponsored video. As you're all aware, I do not have any sponsors and I'm okay with that, but Fubalon did not sponsor me with this. I bought this with my hard earned cash. All right. <clears throat> So that's the shelves. And then below the shelves, we have the other side of the bookcase itself. I keep calling it a bookcase. It's clearly labeled and marketed as a bookshelf. I feel like a bookcase has to have a solid back. That would be, at least in my head, the reason why something would be a bookcase versus a bookshelf. Okay. So we've got all this packaging that we don't need any more, so let's get this out of the way. By out of the way, we'll just move it off the rug. We need to now open these brackets. Okay. Let's now open these rods. And we'll do a quick material check when we get everything uncovered to make sure that we have all the parts we're supposed to have. 
because nothing makes you feel more like an idiot than after you've put something together or you've gotten halfway through putting something together realizing that you did not have all the parts to begin with. That is a pet peeve of mine. All right. According to these instructions, we should have two of these metal frames, which we do. We should have two of the larger crossbars, which we do. We should have five support rods. We've got that. We should have five shelves. We have those. And then we get to these fun little components here. So item A, which is here, we should have 20 of these screws, which I'm going to go with. Usually screws like that have the right numbers as long as there's not a hole in the bag and the bag appears to be in good shape. Uh, item B here, we're supposed to have four screws, which we do. C1, which is not in order. C1, we have two of these anchors to connect the shelf to the wall. We have some screws here. C2, I typically don't attach my bookshelves to the wall. Uh, we have levelers for the um, metal frames. There's four of those. Four of those. E1. E1. Let's see, we have one of those. That is correct. E2. Yep, got one of those. We need the Allen wrench, F1. F2 is this wrench. And then we need 10 of what they're referring to as G, which is these super long screws here. There should be 10 of these. Three, four, five, six. I'm counting about eight. Probably just me being a bad counter. Would not be the first time something like that has happened. It looks like we have uh, miscellaneous extra parts up here in case something's missing. So I will give some credit there and say that's a really good thing that they included extra hardware. It looks like a couple extra levelers, uh, an extra wrench, an Allen wrench as well. So uh, yeah, I'll definitely give props for that. So here we are. According to the instructions, we lay the metal flames. Huh, I can't talk. It's late where I am. Not really, it's like five. Uh, but we lay these metal frames on their side and then we attach the braces on the back using, it appears to be the B screws. So let's go ahead, liberate those from the packaging. Probably need to pay attention to to which side of these beams make sure that they're matching because we have the ends here that will need the levelers and as much as i might want to go ahead and attach those levelers that's not what the instructions say so we're not going to do that um let's see all right so you can see that one side of these frames has holes in the back for the support so that does help narrow down where we need to put these supports in at. So I also see some screw holes through the rod as well as a flat piece right there. Hopefully you can see that in the shot, but there's a little flat piece. I want to make sure that that particular bar, they could be identical, but I want to make sure that we're not causing any issues there. I don't think we are. I think we want the flats of these supports to be against these braces. All right, getting off to a great start here. I could see where it might be helpful if you had an extra person, you know, helping you hold things, but I like to live dangerously. Let's see. I think I also need to get that Allen wrench out. Seems like that might be important. I have the hardest time keeping up with Allen wrenches. I've seen some Allen wrenches that are actually all included on one tool, which seems like a pretty good idea. But uh, I don't have one of those. So whenever a piece of furniture comes with a tool like this, I tend to use it. Um, and I think that's also another, another neat part about this live stream is I'm only using the tools that were provided. I'm not taking any loopholes. I'm not busting out any, you know, $300 drills that I don't own. Anything like that. 
I'm just using what they gave me. All right. So, so far, I think I'm following the instructions. But my plan is to get these two pieces, or this one brace installed to connect these two pieces. And then after that, we'll get the remaining brace installed. And that will have completed step one for us. All right, so we're, I'm tightening up with the Allen wrench. All right, so far so good. Another interesting thing that I've thought about when thinking about these live streams and putting things together or doing jobs is, you know, it's not as edited down as some videos might be, but that also gives you a real look in how long it, it takes me to do things and maybe gives you some things to think about before you start on your own. It's not as easy as editing a video. You know, certain jobs you can't do in 20 minutes. You might be able to edit a video down to make it appear like it happened in 20 minutes, but that's not how life works. All right. So I've already lost a screw. It's par for the course for me. If anyone's commented live, if anyone's found the stream, appreciate the comments, but I'm in the middle of working, so I'm not reading any comments at, at this time. Yeah, so I'm a 32-year-old man live streaming myself assembling furniture in my office. That's how far we've come. Okay, so having some problems getting the screw started. I think I see why. It's because the bracing is not lined up appropriately. Let's go ahead and try to make that fit better. Looks like it is going to. All right, I want to leave the screws a little bit loose in case I need to adjust something. So it's saying that for this middle screw, I need to use E1 and E2 in this package. So, let's go ahead and get these out. I actually bought this on Black Friday, and you know, if you're looking at the date of this recording, you know, we're in the middle of January, but that's just kind of how things have gone for me. Uh, you know, we've uh, had some busy holidays. Everybody in my family was sick. That was fun. I think it's just the season of passing things around. Presence and sickness, as it were. All right. So I've gotten out the wrench that came with the tool to hold on to that nut. I'm using, I believe it's E1 and E2, as it was called in the instructions. I'm just tightening it firmly. I do want to tighten that one firmly. And since I've gotten that middle connection made, I'm probably going to go ahead and also tighten these as well. I do want to actually look ahead on one item. I see there's some holes in these braces. I want to make sure those are not going to come back up. It appears that the holes in these braces, and maybe you can see them here and here and here and here, those are actually used to attach the shelf uh, the bookshelf, yes, not bookcase, uh, but they're used to attach it to the wall. So I should not need to attach anything there. Let's see. It would actually be kind of funny if I was talking this whole time and my microphone wasn't working and no one, uh, no one could hear what I was saying. And funny in a ironic way, not a haha -ha way. All right, so now we're going for these screws, these G screws. So we're attaching these frame or these uh well yep spill the screws it happens so we're gonna use these screws that are scattered across my floor we're gonna use these screws and i just merged a bunch of the bags together this is real life people this is what happens 
Uh, but I know that these shorter screws are the G screws. I was able to hold on to a couple of those. But uh, we're just going to now follow step two in the manual and go ahead and attach these in the middle of these brackets. And I say that, you know, I said with such confidence, those were the G screws, but now I'm looking and these screws are not long enough to serve that purpose. So I think the G screws must be these longer screws. It's funny how your opinions change so quickly sometimes when you realize you were wrong. Are there conveniently 10 of these? Yep, okay. Scratch that. This was a video, I would edit that part out. But it's a live stream. It's high stakes right here. So it appears that these bars are threaded. So probably can't see this, but I'm actually just holding the screw in place. I'm just turning the bar um, with my hand while I hold the screw in place. I'll now ultimately will use the Allen wrench to tighten it up more. But at least for now, this is just going to be able to hold it in place. I'm always a little bit gun shy about trying to tighten all of the screws at, uh, at once uh, and you know max them out and tighten them up all the way. Because if you do that, then it's hard to actually have whatever you're building flex and move around and you know, sometimes you need to force a piece in that you might not be able to if everything's super tight. So we're just going to go for hand tight for now, and we'll go back and tighten everything up a little bit later. Okay, one bar in. So some of the things I'm thinking about doing live streams on, I have a 2019 Honda Odyssey uh, that I need to change the oil in. And I also sometimes do my own transmission flushes, so I thought that might be interesting. Cut my own grass. Might be able to get one video out of that um, before it's really boring. Um, but yeah, so things like that. Maybe some some car things. Maybe some outdoors type projects. Nothing that's going to take ten hours. Maybe one hour at the most. All right, so that bar is in. I will say to you in the back of my head, I'm really worried that I'm going to almost have this finished and then I'm going to have missed a step or skip something. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna look pretty stupid if that happens, but we'll see. I am going to turn it on its side like this. I think I can probably get away with that for a minute, just so it's easier to work with. You know, I ironically said I was going to turn it on my side and make it easier to work with. I'm actually having more problems now than I was before. So we might go ahead and turn it back on its uh, on one of the faces so that we can get it to work. Or we might just need to get the screw started. Here's like that was the issue, just getting the screw to get started turning into the bar. Heard that pop. I broke my own rule. I just said I was going to hand tighten everything and I got carried away. What can I say? Get so excited. These do it yourself projects. It's funny because something like this might not count to some people as a do it yourself project, but then other people might spend like $40 or so, you know, having someone assemble it for them. And you know, it does take some time to be able to assemble something like this, but at the same time, for every little bit that you're able to do yourself, you learn more for the next project so you can do it faster, but you also save yourself some money. And maybe you can use that money to 
invest in something. Maybe you can use that money to, you know, be greedy and buy something else. I don't know. Like, <laughs> typically with my money, me and my family will sometimes go out to dinner and eat out. Sometimes we uh, might rent a movie or something like that. All right, so I think we are almost through with step two. So once we get these screws all the way in on both these bars, I can go back really fast and tighten them up with the Allen wrench. Already misplaced my Allen wrench. <clears throat> it's back here. What do you know? We've made it this far. It's coming together, and there's not been any screaming kids yet. See, when you hear those pops too, it just does not give me that warm, fuzzy feeling. This means I got carried away. So, so far, I, I probably should give like an overview of my thoughts on the product so far. I will say that the railing feels a little bit flimsy, but I believe I paid around $100 for this bookshelf, so can't really throw too many stones at it. I did look online recently, and by recently I mean about 10 minutes before the stream started. Saw it was selling for about $139, but there was a $20 coupon, so... I mean, all that to say, like, I shouldn't be expecting this to survive some sort of atomic blast or something like that. All right. Step two completed. Yay. So, attach the five shelves into the assembled metal frames with screws by Allen Key. Okay. And then they also want us to attach the levelers as needed for uneven flooring. Okay. So the end down here with the longer supports, they're just a little bit longer. These are the legs where the levelers go. So I'm just going to briefly turn these in just to go ahead and be able to finish that part of the project off. All right. And then we'll fight the shelves in just a minute. So let's go ahead, let me refer back to the instructions one last time. I'm actually going to do this bottom shelf first because if I do that one I can then turn the entire bookshelf vertically and it'll be easier to work. So all right. So let's do this. So you might not be able to see, I think I noted when I was taking the shelves out that there were um, some sort of grommet, I guess, or some sort of bolt already installed into the shelf. So all I'm doing now is I'm using these screws to actually go through the frame that we've assembled and then tap into that bolt, that grommet, to be able to get some grip. So let's go ahead and tighten that up. I'm not going to get these too tight. I don't know how well... It will handle, you know, these things being too tight. 
But guys, we're almost in the home stretch. I don't know if you've made it this far into the, the video or the live stream, but you are seeing in real time what it takes to assemble this particular bookshelf. So determine for yourself if this is something you want to spend a couple hours working on during a night. And you could be sitting around playing video games or watching your favorite show. And that would be it, you know, an added level of this that would make it more enjoyable, I think, is if you actually had something playing in the background. Let me go ahead and stand up. Hopefully, I might actually be out of the shot now. You might get to see my closet. Not that anyone wants to see that. Okay. Let's readjust the... All right. We will at least go ahead and install these. Let me go ahead and get my Allen wrench out to tighten this up. Oh, that one's gonna go in really easily. That's good. And hopefully adjusting the view is going to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. I think it will. So I'm not as worried about getting these tight just because I don't think it's going to flex enough to cause any problems. They also make attachments for your drill that have like that hex head attachment. So if you wanted to take an easier way out, you could probably use your drill to tighten these screws. The main problem I see with that though, is if you do that, you're going to have to um, be very careful. You don't strip the bolts or anything like that. So you see how this one's wanting to go in at an angle and that's because I've already tightened everything up and it's not gripping or it's not as straight up and down as it should be. So on the next shelf, what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to leave the bolts a little bit looser before I do anything. All right, let me go ahead and check my camera angle. Yeah, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So just so you can see, these are the bolts that are already embedded into the uh, into the shelf itself. So that's good. So let's go ahead. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flip this over. All right. Once again, my, my plan here after that first shelf, just to get these started, if I can get all four started, all four lined up, and then I'll go ahead and start, you know, manually tightening them and get them to a point where they'll be really, uh, really in there. But I did get burned on the last one because I got the other three tight before I tried to put the last one in. So what's the expression? Little strokes, fell great oaks or something to that effect. Yeah, so this is definitely working better, just going ahead and getting all four started and then Going back to tighten them up, I think that's going to be the best way forward. So yeah, we've got two of the shelves done. Three more to go of this five shelf bookcase. That's how the math works. Let's do that. go ahead and get this one attached and then I'll go back and check my camera angle. 
because I think we're going to have to adjust it a little bit to get these last two shelves in. So if you're looking around, you might see that there are some differences in this room. I have painted the walls and I did change out the flooring. I don't think that there's been any videos in the past where I've shown the, the floor of this room, but flooring in this room was done before Christmas as well as the painting. So my plan is you can probably see behind me, see my closet back here and all of my junk that I have in my closet. But my plan is to actually put some doors on the closet. Imagine that. But uh, what, I'm, what I'm going to do, I've done some barn doors on closet doors in the past. And the, uh, the doors that were on this closet previously were just typical doors with a track. Uh, but what I'm looking to do, there's actually some curtains out there uh, that you can say they're curtains. They're like panel curtains, I think is what they're called. But you can hang them up and they, you can cut them to length. The link that you need for your opening and you basically just hang them up and then you're able to you know have them slide so when i was actually framing out this closet because i actually also made the closet larger as well uh, but when i did that i just made sure that i was going back with trim that could support uh, any sort of curtain rod not really curtain rod but like uh, curtain mounting apparatus might be better better to describe it, it's actually as I'm standing here thinking about it in real time, it's not the easiest thing to describe. It's almost like a track, um, and I'm probably overcomplicating it, but uh, it's really just a track that, you know, the curtains are able to slide along, and you can open and close as you need to. So, let's go ahead. So Haj Josan, thank you very much for the comment. I see that, and I greatly appreciate that. I, to my knowledge, and I've not been watching very closely, but to my knowledge, you are the first person to comment on the stream, so I greatly appreciate that. All right. So, like I said, we've got two more shelves. And this project, in my mind, will be over because I do not intend to attach it to the wall. You know, I've seen the, the videos we probably all have where, you know, a child, small child like the ones I might have, uh, climbs up on some bookcase and pulls it down on themselves. Uh, my kids, one is five, the, uh, the twins are almost four, so I think we're past that stage of climbing, so I'm not as worried about it, um, you know, being pulled over by small children. Uh, but my plan is to put it in a place of really back here in the corner. You can actually see where I'm planning to put it, but I'm going to put it back here in the corner and, uh, fill it up with really nerdy things and, uh, probably not let the kids in here. So, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the plan. All right, we are almost one shelf away from having this project finished. And I think, if I remember correctly from just looking at the camera, I think that the stream's been running for about 26 minutes, which means that it's taken me right at about 30 minutes to assemble this, which is really not that bad. I, when I first was thinking about this project and trying to live stream it, I was actually expecting it to take closer to an hour. So, I'm, one, I'm glad that's not the case. Uh, but two, you know, 30 minutes to assemble something like this is really not that bad. So my plan is to get this last shelf attached, and then I will do a quick walk around this shelf now that it's assembled. And uh, kind of talk some about my thoughts about it, about the quality, you know, typical review type stuff. I will say that after I've, really when I started adding those pipes in between the two supports, not the cross bracing, but the, really the pipes that are underneath the shelves, the frame really did start to feel more sturdy. And these shelves to some extent have helped, I think make it a little bit sturdier as well. So 
I think just kind of as a high level as I'm, you know, putting in these last screws and beginning to tighten them up, I would say that the shelf is good quality. I wouldn't say it's great quality. I would say in my head, not knowing the furniture market very well, I don't really feel like the shelf is worth $100. And based on what I saw earlier, I think I, I said I looked online before the stream started. Current going rate for the shelf is about $139, and you can get uh, $20 off coupon, so $120. If I'm being honest, I don't think it's worth that. Um, it just feels a little bit flimsy to me, all things considered, uh, for that price. Um, I think under $100 would probably make sense, and I think that actually on Black Friday, I think it was $89 or something like that. I would have to go back and actually look to make sure, but um, I don't think I paid $139 for it. That that would feel wrong to me. As tight as I am, that just, just does not seem to be something I would do, so. All right. Okay, so I think we are fully constructed. 